Hi everyone, Dr. Wild back again to talk to you a little bit more about developments going on in our local area. Uh, as you all know, I am the FEO, the Public Health Emergency Officer, and we've had a large increase in numbers recently in Nebraska, as well as a lot of, in a lot of information coming in about increasing testing capacity and etc. So I just wanted to touch base, provide some more outreach and education, and focus specifically on a few things that we've had happen recently, um, mainly to talk about pediatrics and COVID-19 uh, in, in the face of the recent positive that we had at a childcare center. So I know there's been a lot of questions and a lot of concern about that. So I would like today to introduce you to my special guest, a pediatrician from our clinic who is also part of our COVID-19 task force and has been working with us fighting this disease for quite a while now, since the beginning, Dr. Becker. Thank you, Dr. Wild. As you said, I'm Dr. Becker. Some of you know me as one of the pediatricians on base. Some of you haven't met me because you might be adults that I don't get to see very often. I want to talk to you a little bit about this COVID-19. Coronavirus is actually a virus we see year after year in the winter and springtime in children. It usually is a very mild disease and we don't think too much of it, just a common cold. Now with this year's coronavirus, it's a new virus we hadn't seen before. It's a variety of it that we just haven't experienced. So a lot of people aren't immune to it. Children in particular are actually having the symptoms that they would basically normally have with coronavirus, fever, fatigue, dry cough. They may also have nasal congestion or a little bit of runny nose, maybe some nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, but a lot of them are actually asymptomatic, meaning they don't show them any sign of having it. Their illness can last for about one to two weeks, and we really don't have a treatment option. There's no magic pill to take that's gonna take this away. It's something that takes time and our body's own immune system to fight it. So what can you do to help prevent this illness from getting to others in the family or spreading to those neighbors and anyone else? Social distancing, keeping away from others, as hard as it is, because children are gonna wanna play with their peers. They really should be avoiding that at this time. Staying at home, keeping with only those close contacts in the household. Hand washing, washing all the toys they have, even their stuffed animals, which can go through your washing machine, are all great ways of keeping from spreading it. If they have to go out, having them wear a mask. Seeing you wear a mask and others around them wear a mask help normalize the experience and hopefully will keep your kid from pulling it off all the time, which it's gonna be hard because it's something new and different. During this time too, there's a lot of strain and pressure on the families because children don't understand what's going on. They're quite intuitive and they, under, they understand that something's scary going on around, the, around them but unless somebody's talking to them about it, they're not gonna be able to understand it. So please talk to your family about what's happening. You can even go to the Centers for Disease Control website and a few others online that help give resources for families, for families on how they can actually talk to their kids about this. Making sure they understand that this is only hopefully for a short time, but that if we do all these measures and keep our distance for now, we may be able to get out there sooner. Also looking for fun activities for your family and like learning experiences for them. Sciencefun.org was a website I found recently that has a lot of science um, experiments that you can do at home with household goods that you have lying around. So trying to do that, taking museum tours online, which are all over the place. Look for places all over the world that you never expect to go and see if you can travel there virtually with your family. We also wanna let you know that even though we aren't seeing everyone in clinic at this time and that we've very much limited the face-to-face -face visits that we have, we still have virtual appointments and we have MyCare messaging. Please ask us your questions. Reach out to us, let us know your concerns or what's going on with your child and see if there's some way for us to help, um, help you over the phone or over videoing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Becker. I want to remind everybody that you have an entire facility, med group facility, just down the road from you with people who are dedicated to supporting you, to helping you, to educating you, to taking care of you and your families, because that is our number one mission. Your health, your well-being is what we focus on every day at the med group, and we're always available to you for any sort of questions or assistance you may need. So remember that you can reach out to us, you can leave messages, you can call the appointment line, after hours there is a nurse advice line, all of those numbers are available online to you, and please do use them because we're here to help you. I would also like to talk today about OB patients in the current environment with SARS-CoV-2. It's something else that we've got a lot of questions about and I know it's an area that people have a lot of concerns. Pregnant people are definitely on the list of what we would be concerned about for high risk. However, 
It is not quite as simple as that, and it's actually not as complicated as that as well. So to give us a little bit more insight on that today and to educate all of us on COVID-19 and pregnancy, I would like to introduce my second special guest of the day, and that's Dr. Tony Eshelman. Thanks, Dr. Weld. Um, I just want to give uh, our perspective um, from the Women's Health Department um, for COVID-19 uh, illnesses and pregnancy. Some of the things that are, are really important to, to get out to the public are that um, while it's, uh, it's very scary uh, and it's very new, we're still doing all that we can to learn about how this disease affects uh, our pregnant population. Um, the studies so far don't specifically indicate that pregnant women are more susceptible uh, to catching the disease, but while other respiratory illnesses have shown that pregnant women um, sometimes are more affected or have more severe diseases, um, we don't know that for sure about COVID, but we do suspect that that uh, could be the case. Current evidence doesn't show that there's any transmission um, from moms to babies while they're pregnant. Um, there is certainly a risk uh, after delivery and in the postpartum period for that. Uh, specifically, I think people have, I know a lot of our patients have concerns uh, about breastfeeding. And while we encourage breastfeeding, there are a lot of benefits uh, from breastfeeding, including the benefit of fighting off infections. There's, uh, there's no evidence right now that the coronavirus is found within breast milk or amniotic fluid for that matter. Um, so we still encourage moms to breastfeed. If you are positive or suspected to be positive, we would recommend um, pumping. And if you do that, you need to have a dedicated pump and make sure you wash your hands uh, before touching any of the parts um, for the breast pump. And if at all possible, have a healthy person, then uh, feed the baby. If you're gonna direct breastfeed, we do recommend that moms wear a mask um, and that they wash their hands uh, before starting breastfeeding. Anticipation uh, for uh, the end of pregnancy for our, for our moms, I do wanna relay that we are currently uh, having all of our OB services taken care of at the University of Nebraska Medicine uh, instead of the Bellevue facility where we were. The Bellevue facility is now being used for, for COVID patients. Um, over at UNMC, uh, the labor and delivery units on the fourth floor. For any of our moms that are being scheduled for either an induction uh, or for a C-section, you'll be contacted prior to that date to have your um, COVID-19 testing done. It needs to be done approximately 72 to 48 hours prior to going into the hospital so that they can have uh, accurate testing um, for our, all our moms that are there. If you happen to be the lucky one that, that goes into labor on your own um, and just shows up, they'll test you uh, once you get admitted into the hospital. Um, and they'll maintain uh, testing for all inpatients there. For uh, all of our you know, members and, and persons that are around our pregnant patients, uh, whether or not you're traveling for work or traveling um, from overseas for PCS purposes or deployment purposes, we do recommend uh, people coming from high-risk areas quarantine themselves uh, for 14 days. This uh, does not necessarily mean that you cannot stay in the same household. We continue to recommend uh, the same uh, social distancing that the CDC recommends as far as wearing a mask and washing things, staying at least six feet away from people, um, not sharing food and beverages, uh, and trying to limit closer interactions uh, to, to less than 10 minutes. Uh, so there are a lot of concerns that in light of the pandemic, being pregnant uh, makes you uh, a high-risk population. And while I said before, you know, we suspect that if you were to catch the disease, you are at, you know, an increased risk for having severe disease. Um, there's no current indication that you need to stop doing your normal activities or that people can't go to work uh, just because they're pregnant. Um, with that being said, you know, like I said before, we. We don't suspect that you're a higher risk for susceptibility or that you're going to catch the disease earlier. Uh, 
for most of our, our patients, we don't recommend you know, any change to your normal activity or you know, if you need to go to work uh, for essential personnel. Um, with the exception of our pregnant healthcare workers, uh, we are advising those um, uh, patients or you know, other high-risk uh, work activities for other, for other people that they talk to their supervisors and see if uh, they're able to work in a lower risk environment. Um, for our healthcare workers, the, the example is, you know, working in other units that aren't taking care of COVID patients um, or avo avoiding uh, high risk uh, procedural areas. So a special thank you to both my guests today. I hope that this has been helpful and educational for you all. Like I said, remember we're here to help you anytime you need us. You can get us through the appointment line or uh, through the public health office. Um, there are multiple resources available to you that you've been given some of today, including the CDC, uh, Nebraska Public Health Department's got a lot of really good information online about all of these things. But remember, this is our job. It is to take care of you and to provide you with all the information that you need to be safe and to be healthy and to come out on the other side of this COVID-19 crisis intact and happy and well. So thank you again, and I'll see you all soon.